So in this video, we're going to look at uh, just thinking about whether we can uh, make our printing a little bit better uh, for option A. And just to uh, remind ourselves, it's always good to go back to what the task is asking. Um, so it asks us to validate the user input to make sure they don't make a mistake possibly in entering the fixture number. Um, and then the rest of it is just dedicated to printing out these headings and then the information underneath this. Now the validation we're going to uh, come back and have a look at um, a little bit later and I'm just going to consider the printing to begin with. So just looking back at our option A, first of all we should just clarify um, exactly what this function is going to do. So if we're just um, uh, for mine, I'm just going to assume it is given a valid fixed num. So what I'm saying is that uh, we won't put the validation um, of checking whether this fixture number exists in the file or not inside this function. Maybe we can do that um, outside elsewhere. So we're just going to assume that the only thing that this function does is print a fixture number which is valid. So again just commenting some of the things here so that they're absolutely clear um, what they do. So this line here all lines equals get file data this is basically getting um, all of the data from our fixtures file um, in a format which we can process. So this gets um, formatted or processed data so that we don't have to worry about that and it gets the formatted data and it stores it in a variable called all lines um, and then we've got a for loop for loop very similar to the for loop we did there which goes through um, each row one at a time and it checks whether the very first item is equal to the fixture number and if it is then it does the printing now what we don't want is to get our printing confused inside our for loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out this line and just say, well, the title needs to be printed whatever happens. So let's just uh, paste in our printing outside of there. So this, these, this is the printing of the headings and the that's um, these headings here. So we're going to sort those out a, a little bit. Um, and so I need a, another line after that to print the second part of the title. And then this part is, is just printing um, if the fixture number has been found. So that's all it does. So I'm uh, just going to um, see whether there's a better way of writing this instead of having to guess whether it's temp1, um, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because that can sometimes be confusing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with writing it this way but to just to uh, make this clearer we can assign um, uh, uh, individual variables to each one of these and then just use them in our print statement. What I mean by that is having a look at our file structure and maybe using these names instead of just numbers which are meaningless to us to determine um, what it is that we have read in. So let's uh, go back to here and look at how we can do that. So one thing I can do is that if the fixture number has been found then um, what we can do is we can list um, a, a load of variables. So we can say for example fnum is the first thing that is shown in our list. Um, that's followed by a uh, date. So we can label it like so. And then we have a uh, time, which we don't want to include, but is read in any way. And then we've got um, nickname one. And then we've got nickname two, just keeping these very short. And then whether the game was played. Um, so maybe we'll just call that played. Uh, and then the winning, uh, winning nickname. So maybe I'll just call that W Nick. And then we can just assign all of that to temp. And so what this is doing is it's saying, 
Um, I know that temp is made up of lots of different elements because it's one row. And so what I want to do is when you come across the very first item, call that fnum, call the second one date, call the third element in tem, temp time, call the fourth one uh, nick one, etc, etc, all the way down to the winning nickname. So these are just our variable names. And so now instead of printing temp zero, which um, may not be meaningful, we can say I'd like you to print f name. And then we don't want the time printed actually, what we want is just the date. Um, so we can just ignore time and just move on to date. So it makes it simpler to refer to the individual elements by names rather than just uh, numbers. So all I'm doing here is uh, changing these temp uh, references using square brackets to just the names, which just makes our code a little bit more uh, readable. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm just going to sort out the um, headings given here because once we've got the program working then we can uh, think about sorting out the printing. So let me just do that um, off camera. Um, so here I've just put in the uh, first line of the headings and the second line of the headings and I've just used space to line them up and that is just because that's how they're written here. Um, so I could have put uh, more spaces in between those and then the rest of my print is uh, exactly how you would choose it but it's just that the title printing has been removed out onto the top and then we might need to put in um, some tabs but there's a better way of doing that which uh, we'll look at um, much later on when we tidy up the whole program uh, so uh, so we can run this and see what it looks like and then uh, spend some time um, sorting that out. So let me just uh, save this file and run this. And we'll just test it with a different option number this time. Uh, again, a one that exists. Um, oh, whoops. It's uh, option A. and just have a look to see how the printing so the printing of the title is fine and these uh, need to be tabbed in so they sit underneath that uh, but essentially option a that's uh, all of the work we're going to do for option a for the moment and then in the next video we're just going to look at how we get option uh, b completed um, and then we'll come back and i'll show you whether we can also use a list comprehension which is what we did up the top here um, for this so that we don't uh, is there a way of not having um, a for loop and simplifying it into a list comprehension like this even if we've we're checking to see whether something exists um, so let's uh, stop this video here and go on to option b